Hi. Hi. There you are. What is this lighting you have right now? You look like glowy sun goddess. The sun. And it's like the perfect time of day. Oh, yes. Got that golden hour. I love that. My life's just like cold and sterile. No, it looks good. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to anyone who might not know who you are. Um, okay. I'm Demi Lovato. I'm a singer and I act and I like to speak up about things I'm passionate about. Yes, you do. And that's why I wanted to have you today. Um, in case anyone who's watching this doesn't know, or if you don't know and you don't remember, um, I have a playlist called She, Her, They, and it features all LGBTQ, non-binary, um, off the spectrum type, I'm not off the spectrum, what am I even fucking talking about? Just all over the spectrum, um, women and femmes and everything and music. And I just thought it would be nice to have one central place for everyone in the community to like find music they like and people they identify with and totally um, yeah so you're on there oh uh, yeah thank you <laughs> um but yeah I feel like we've known each other for so long and I just like am so inspired by your eagerness to learn and seeing you find yourself over the, over the years has been such a like beautiful thing to watch. You just really step into your authenticity and be so unapologetic about who you are and everything you care about and not really have ego when it comes to, to learning and everything. I think that's super beautiful and um, exactly why I want people to hear you speak. So oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I definitely think it's important right now that, everyone takes the ego out of learning no matter what it is we're trying to learn about right now whether it's how to stay healthy or social injustices um it's just like there can't be any ego right now we all have to learn and we all have to you know um come together totally it's it's really interesting because for so long and i i know a lot of people are kind of going through this um unlearning process and really facing a lot of uncomfortable feelings which when you're new to like separating yourself from your ego to learn and be better and not be defensive, it can be really uncomfortable. Yeah. So I, I have a lot of compassion for everybody who's going through this new, like, oh my God, I grew up in a society that like priv gave me privilege. Well, I can't talk, gave me privilege for all these different reasons and kind of seeing outside of that. So it's, it's super important to have um, no ego there. But um, actually, before we get started, because I ask everybody else this, how do you identify pronouns as well as if you have a label for your sexuality or not, whatever? Um, I guess I would identify as, I don't, I don't really know what I identify as when it comes to my sexuality, because sometimes I identify as bisexual, and then sometimes I, like, when I've um, listened to people talk about being pansexual I like identify with that as well so it's just um I'm very fluid and I don't really ever I've never really put a label on it but not because um not for any specific reason other than just like I'm super fluid and I feel like there may be a term that comes out in a year or two that I relate to more so um yeah just I and my pronouns are she and her so right love that yeah, I think it's so it's so interesting because like this newer newer generation and like Gen Z and all that, um, and just the time we're in, it's so much more accepted and encouraged to be just authentic, whatever that means. Whether it's yeah. you're fluid, whether you want to label yourself as this thing one day or that thing another day, it's just like being true to yourself in the moment is the most important part. And I think that's something that so many prior generations are really missing that can be harmful for people trying to find themselves. Yeah. I, I've learned a lot about myself personally, just over the past couple of years, as I've like leaned into being more authentic and doing things that make me happy instead of what makes other people happy. It's kind of taken away um, those harmful behaviors or urges that like I've had in the past 
because in the past I was trying to like shove down who I actually authentically was. And um, yeah, just, I think too many generations have learned that like ignoring who you are um, is only going to hurt you in the long run. And so now we're kind of moving into a different world where we're just, we want everyone to be okay with who they are and yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's really, it's been some nice shifting and I feel like things are kind of moving at a faster pace now where people are like progressing so much more quickly and learning to accept things so much more quickly. So it's just, I can't imagine where we're going to be in like 10 years. Yeah. I feel like it's not even going to be a thing. Like no one's going to even, I mean, I guess that's way too fucking helpful to think that there's (laughs) going to be discrimination, but I think it's just going to be like much more chill of an issue. And I, at least I hope so. But um, you talked about just kind of coming to terms with being your authentic self and everything. Do you feel like, do you feel pretty okay with being yourself and being free to be yourself now? Or do you still kind of grapple with certain insecurities? And, and how do you kind of like deal with those? Over the past year and a half specifically, like I've really learned a lot about who I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've become more unapologetic in that, in, in a sense of like, if someone doesn't like who I am or doesn't like um, the things that I like to wear or whatever, like it's not, it's not that big of a deal. I don't, I don't look online for validation anymore in the comment section of like what people are going to say. Um, so dangerous to do in the first place. My God. Exactly. I, I untagged myself out of photos, like, I think like a year and a half ago. Then I turned them back on just because I like to see fan art. And then I turned them back off. And ever since I've done that, it just was like so much better for my mental health of just like not seeing what people have to say about the outfits I wear. I just like, I wear what makes me comfortable and I just don't do anything for anybody else. Unless I like want to do something nice for someone you know no it's so it's so true because like seeing anything a lot of people want to be like I'm strong I don't care what people think about me but then like when you're constantly seeing people commenting on like everything about your identity how you present how you look like everything it's just like nobody is nobody can be numb to that it's just not possible to be unbothered by that right and I feel like I used to read the comment sections of like what should I be like, even in the past month or so, like, what should I be posting about? Um, because I want to be more in tune. I want to like know the things that I should be highlighting. And, um, but you know, even in a, there are times where people are telling me to post about things that like, I might not know enough information about yet. And I like, don't post for anybody, but my, myself and, um, putting things on that platform of like, this is what I want to share and hopefully help people with. But um, even in that sense, like I don't, I really don't, I don't post for anybody. I don't do anything for anybody, but myself and my happiness. That's all that matters at the end of the day. I think, you know, just taking the time to learn things is so important. People are so quick to post things and and then it realize later on, it might've been harmful or it might've not been the most helpful, productive thing or, Right. Some sus shit behind it. And then you're like, well, fuck. (laughs) Right. Right. So that's, I think that's the number one takeaway is just taking the time to educate yourself and being okay with not knowing everything. Yeah. People are so focused on like having all the answers all the time. And it's okay to not know shit and say you don't know shit. Like, I, I am totally okay with acknowledging that I don't have all the answers. And like, every day is a work in progress and I will continue to learn and I will do whatever I can to learn. Um, but I, yeah, I am, I do not have the answer. I thought that I would know a lot more by 27, but I feel like I'm just now starting to learn. I feel like there's some, there's some quote by some philosopher, um, just about how like you just, you never stop learning. Like, up until the day you die, like we're just going to have to constantly be learning because we don't know everything. Things are always changing and there's just always room to be better and room to grow and room okay. to learn. 
Yeah. You know, um, so I wanted to talk to you a bit about your coming out process, which I, I think you came out like right shortly after we met or right before, I don't recall. Yeah. So. Um, it, it was, I was, well, I think my documentary came out and like right around the time that we met or right after. And you know, but you came out to your, like your family. Well, yes. Yeah. So those were two different processes for right. me, like, because to the world, I had no problem like singing cool for the summer and acknowledging, mm -hmm. um, by curiosity and like, but when it came to having that conversation with my mom, it was a different story because, um, we grew up in the South and I just didn't, I knew that my mom loved me and I knew that she would accept me, mm -hmm. but I didn't know if that would create, um, a different dynamic or, or what. And, um, I was afraid to be that honest and that vulnerable with her, but, um, it was really great because she was just so accepting of everything and was just like, I'm not, I'm, I can't imagine being, um, like judgmental of you. I just want you to be happy. Yeah. And I, and I really wish everyone could have that. And unfortunately not everyone does, but in that moment I was like, wow, this is the type of mom that I want to be for my kids later on in life. If, they come to me and say, Hey, this is what I identify as. Mm -hmm. I want to be like, just fully supportive and give them the same love that my mom gave me. It makes such a difference just to have the people you love show you love back in a way that's compassionate and non judgmental. Like, it makes such a big difference. And I think something that really helps with that is just more normalization of this like the more people that are just out and open and show about who they are and their identity it just makes it less of a big scary thing you know like yeah totally I think that like I too also wasn't um wasn't totally sure of my sexuality until I got out of a relationship that I was a heterosexual relationship that I was in for so many years mm -hmm. when I thought, you know, at one point that was going to be my life path. I didn't know if I was ever going to date other people. And so I didn't want to identify or come out as queer because I didn't want to say, Hey, I'm queer, but then only be with okay. the rest of my life. I didn't, it's, but which is still totally okay to be like, okay, exactly. Um, but I think once I, I realized that like that relationship wasn't the relationship for me and I needed to do more growing on my own, then I was able to allow myself to explore that side of me and, and also just like embrace, um, embrace love just in general from, um, yeah, just embrace love. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if you heard music or saw art or more representation when you were younger of just like women loving women or more just queer representation, do you think you would have maybe come to terms with your sexuality and identity a bit sooner or did that not? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it wasn't made okay for me until I came out to LA. Mm -hmm. Um, in Texas, how, had I lived in Texas my whole life, I don't know that I would have ever been comfortable enough to identify as bisexual or fluid, um, because I just, I only knew one way of life mm -hmm. and that was the Southern Christian mentality. And that's why it was, it was hard for me to like come to terms with my sexuality too, of like, um, it, you know, I was scared. Was I going to be shunned? Um, because when you grow up in a religious like community, you know, you, you sometimes see that people can be really hypocritical. Yeah. And, um, it was exciting for me to see, I think like, um, anytime there was like a same sex couple on MTV or something like risque, I was like, Oh, cool. Like I just, I was curious and I was interested in, um, and I guess it didn't dawn on me till later why. Yeah. 
I mean, that's normal. I didn't, I had no idea until I was 15 and my best friend, her boyfriend cheated on her and she's like, fuck it. I'm going to date girls now. Boys suck. Wham. And I was like, okay. And one of her gay guy friends was like, I know a lesbian. Let's set you up. Obviously it didn't work out. She was very straight. Um, but I saw her and I was like, wait, when? Yeah. And what, like, I never knew. I, I just hadn't really had uh, a person I saw other than like Ellen. Yeah. And it's funny how like when you kind of come across someone at a young age that you relate to, like I remember hearing about a girl that was from my hometown and she was bi and she went to a different school. And I was like, I wasn't even that attracted to her, but I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, because you're curious. You're like, what yeah. is it all about? What? Is, yeah, exactly. So it's just, yeah, it's funny how it works out too. Yeah, it makes, it makes such a difference, I think. Like, and that's why it's so cool right now because there's so many, like, I mean, there's still a bit of a, I guess, stigma in our, our society. Like there's still hom- homophobic people and still awful bullying that happens to LGBTQ kids and everything. But um, the, the representation across the board from like, all levels of entertainment is so leveled up now that it's just yeah. kids can find someone they identify with in some way and yeah. maybe it'll help, you know? Totally. I'm really encouraged about that for the future of just like more diversity and more inclusion. Totally. Um, do you feel like you, I mean, you've been making music for since you were an infant fetus, um, <laughs> but do you, did you notice a difference in your creative process between before you came out and after? Um, I definitely, before I like came out, I was very, very particular about pronouns being he. And now like if it fits to a she, then it fits to a she. But, um, I guess like what was interesting is there were songs that I had written about females in the past, but those lyrics I made about the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I guess I never realized that until just now, but I was denying myself in those earlier albums. I think like my, there was a song on like my fourth album or something that, um, like it was about a girl and I had, I don't know. I just, I made the pronouns to a, a guy and it just was like, I wish I didn't do that looking back, but I wasn't ready at the time yeah. either. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think if anything, my music has just gotten more authentic because I've become. More authentic. Right. But, so we've all had that moment in our life where we kind of come to terms with the fact that we may be queer or, lying elsewhere on the spectrum of sexuality or gender did you have a moment like a kind of coming out moment with yourself or with your family about what you wanted to do with your career in music or was it just not really a thing because you started so young like was that yeah. always your plan I think that music has always just been like an afterthought because um like I've just been in the game for so long that like I always just now when it comes to my life I make decisions for my life and then my music will follow you know what I mean it's just like music is kind of this attachment to my being that like no matter what I do my music is going to reflect it somehow right and so I think it definitely um like changed over the the time that like I've been more authentic, but yeah, I think it'll continue to, there's been no like conversation about where my music will go or whatever, just because it's always been with me. Right. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. It's like, I feel like so many people have that, that moment, but I guess like it makes sense because you've been doing this for ebbs. Yeah. <laughs> like when I told my dad that I was like, I'm going to do music stuff. He was like, oh, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> You're not going to be an accountant? What do you mean? I've been singing longer than I can remember talking. Like, oh. I remember singing before talking. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So do you, I mean, I feel like a lot of people don't realize this until later in life looking back, but do you remember what your first same sex crush was, even if it was like a TV character or like a movie person or a cartoon? Like, um, I think, I think it may have been one of my best friends, um, when I was like a preteen. And I think that I didn't realize that's what it was until I got older. I did. We did make out all the time, but I didn't uh, <laughs> didn't put that one together. <laughs> no, that's not obvious. That's not yeah. obvious. Okay. So it was just kind of like, I don't know. Um, looking back, I guess she was my first same-sex crush. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I think it's like one of those things where girls kissing is more normalized than guys kissing you know so like for for two girls to make out when they're drunk at a party it's not you don't have that thought as a female of like guys stop you have that thought of like oh my gosh maybe i'm queer you just think like i'm just being a girl i'm having fun yeah i'm just having fun but then later on i was like wait i'm really ignoring a part of myself that i need to like identify and um yeah wow um yeah when you when you decided to like come out in your documentary because that's a whole other thing like coming out to yourself is one thing and yeah. coming out to your like close friends and family is another thing but then coming out like publicly as yeah. yourself whether you have a bajillion fucking people following your remove or whether you're just in a small town somewhere it's a big deal to live so openly did you have any like apprehension about that were you nervous did that change anything for you no if anything like so what's interesting is I did a music video called really don't care at gay pride in um west hollywood Mm -hmm. and I was on this float like I looked but (laughs) (laughs) you had a little like shaved fun I had like yeah I think it was shaved and then I don't, I, I was like in a masculine outfit. Like it was not, it, it, what's funny is I look at that and I'm like, I was screaming, like, <laughs> hello, I am queer, <laughs> but I was not ready to acknowledge it yet. And so by the time I was able to acknowledge it, I was like, so many people like are not going to be shocked to find this out about me, but it didn't make it that scary for me. Right. I think it might've been a, a different situation had, it been like maybe right out of Disney Channel or mm-hmm. right out of like I don't I don't know I've just had already like been an advocate and an ally. So you're part of the community, of- but like and you were like just dancing around the community. Yes, I was exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so it's such a big thing for for people to um, be so open in that way, and I know that there's we've come a long way just throughout the years of people in the spotlight, being able to just openly be themselves, like thinking mm-hmm. back to the nineties and everything when all these female rappers were clearly super duper gay <laughs> and they just were like, what? No, I'm going to sing about like boys and dick. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> right. Right. Why? Yeah. But it's just, it's really nice to see people just being like, fuck it this is me yeah Yeah. and and that's been the most rewarding part of my adulthood is embracing who I am flaws and all um sexuality and all like just learning more about myself every day and then leaning into the authenticity of it like that keeps me grounded and um yeah it's been the greatest gift in adulthood do you feel like you ever struggle with with that part of your identity or are you like pretty settled or did you have like a moment of adjustment struggles? Cause I feel like a lot of people have that where they're, st- they're trying to figure it out and just a little. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I still feel like I've, I still learn so much about myself every day and I know that I'm going to continue to learn more that like, you know, it's just like, it's nice to be able to um, like know that no matter what, relationship I'm in today or where I am like I'm comfortable in my skin and my sexuality and um and it's cool to like I get to 
continue to live with that mentality the rest of my life. Love that. Love that. I know that there's so much, there's so much um, stigma around. I mean, it's, it's definitely getting a bit better, but I feel like there's always been the stigma around the bisexual community and pansexual people. And um, it's like, it's so nice to see people just be like, no, this is it. And like, you need to respect it. Yeah. Cause we live in like a binary culture. Everything's like black or white. And they're like, pick a side. Are you gay? Are you straight? Like, what are you? And that's been a part of the reason why I haven't really ever put a specific label on my sexuality of just like, sometimes I feel fly. Sometimes I feel pan. Sometimes I'm this, sometimes I'm that. And I just like it. I don't know. So yeah. It's good though, because it's like, I feel like people, and I get people asking me this all the time because I'm just like open door. Anyone who has questions about like social stuff or like LGBT stuff, I'm like, oh, well, you're who I go to. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> like people always come to me when they're like, so I met somebody and they're trans, but they're also a lesbian, but they were born a man, but they have, they're a woman now. And they're polyamorous and they're this and they're that. Yeah. I'm like, explain it to me. And I'm like, there's nothing to explain. You're, yeah. The problem is so many people are trying to put people in boxes into these like pre-made boxes that we've had forever that don't fit everyone. And yeah. like, people's brains hurt from it. You're <laughs> yeah. like, they're trying to put it in the category. And it's like, it's, it's not for in that category or that one. Yeah. Just let it be what it is. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just let that person be who they are. They don't need to fit whatever pre-made labels we have. Yeah, I agree with that totally. Um, okay, Gay Shed Effect. What um what music have you been listening to lately? Do you have any like current new artists that you've been listening to a lot? I just recently discovered this band. I think it's a band. Um the artist's name is Jungle. Um Oh yeah. So I, I'm really digging that um the album that I was listening to I don't know which one (laughs) um and then like yeah um I've been really into Tame Impala Mm, Um, yeah and awesome so good it's so good to just like drive around and like ride a bike or something and just be outside listening to that right now like California um, I I, like will listen to it by the pool because I'm living outside right now yeah um just like laying in the sun every day <laughs> so um awesome. yeah it's really nice but they like they, they, they like it's a, it's a good soundtrack to laying out absolutely it's like if there's sun out King and Paula is like yeah um I know you I think you were mentioning Rosalia a bunch too but she's just like insane she's so yeah. the coolest you don't get cooler than Rosalie. No, I'm like, she doesn't even try and she's as cool as hell. I know. I heard, um, I heard too, because my, my friend was doing visuals for one of her, her live shows and he was telling me, I don't know if it's common knowledge, whatever, but um, he was telling me all of her music from her first or I guess last album, whatever. It's all based on this one old Spanish book. So it's like all of her songs are written based off of this novel. Oh, wow. Like, How fucking cool are you? <laughs> the coolest. Like, what? I wouldn't even think to do that. I feel like everyone I know writes music based off of their life experiences. Or, Well, I did write a song called I Hate You, Don't Leave Me. Uh-huh. Based on a book called I Hate You, Don't Leave Me about borderline personality disorder. Oh, wow. So I heard that title and was like, that would make a fire song. Mm-hmm. And, so the, and then I related a lot to the concept and I kind of just imp- implemented it, but it wasn't like a, a fictional story or anything. But yeah. Really cool though. I, I feel like I haven't heard much of that where people are like pulling inspiration from books and literature stuff. <laughs> yeah. Did you actually read the book or you just like the title? Yeah. I read a little bit of it. I didn't, it was more like a clinical book about, borderline personality disorder so it was like not the easiest to follow but um it also wasn't the hardest to follow it's a very easy read I just get bored very easily (laughs) I have ADHD so I can't get it for yeah I was like I got it 10 pages in (laughs) thanks guys yeah um 
Okay, so that's current ones. Do you have any favorite throwback artists or anyone you kind of like pull inspiration from when you're singing? You have like such a classic voice and your range is insane. So I mm-hmm. love all those old soul singers. I, I've i been pulling a lot of inspiration, I think, from... Um, I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. There's like I, my album like started off with inspiration I wanted like Lauren Hill vibes and then now I'm kind of embracing more uh, I have just a different route and I've kind of like over the past couple months really I've turned into like a little hippie (laughs) I just am like I like am obsessed with nature and um like I'm just constantly taking pictures of flowers and bugs and this and that and just like I don't know I I really embrace that side of me and so I want to incorporate that in my music and maybe I'm just happier now but um that might be it but maybe um, nature is making you happier too like yeah. it works together yeah. are you are you like listening to hippie-esque music like 70s vibes is that where you're like playing from or you're just like lighter Sun yeah, I, I want to include I'm not even like really listening to a lot more lighter music but I just want to incorporate a lighter sound because mm-hmm. in the beginning of my album it was all about you know what happened in 2018 and my journey and and then I've gone through a bunch of stuff since then and so it was like this outpouring of emotion and I just kind of like, I've been really happy the past few months and I want that to be reflected too. I love that. I love seeing you happy. It's so lovely. If you had, um, I guess this ties into this one, but if you could dream up your ideal creation zone, like no limits on electricity, physics, like you can be in the ocean as well as in a field, like with stars around you, whatever you want, what would it look like? Okay, so I, I would love to do, I would love to like put a concert on the moon. Oh. I I have really leaned into my feminine side and the moon represents as a symbol for feminine um, energy. And so like I wanted to, um, when I was thinking about this, I was like, I want to incorporate the moon somehow. Mm-hmm. And so if you could just put a show on the moon, that'd be dope. But I think I would want all women so it's all feminine energy or like people that identify as feminine. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think that'd be so cool. Nice. So you would want to do a concert. But what about like if you were like writing? I feel like studios are so cavey sometimes. Yeah. You know, and it's like hard to be inspired in that space sometimes. But like if you could be writing whatever you're writing that you were going to perform on the moon. Um, would it just be a separate part of the moon? Maybe it'd just be on a separate part of the moon. That works. Yeah. That fucking works. Um, those are all the questions I have for you. Um, we need to, I need to take a photo because this is going to be a cover thing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to just do a screen capture of it real quick. We'll count down. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Cute. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Hey, bye, babe. Bye.